Good evening, I am Dr. Joanne Malone, the pastor of the Savage Baptist Church at 26 South William Street, Wyandotte, Georgia, and I am here tonight at the Hilton Hotel at Peachtree Corners in Mount Cross, Georgia, on a personal invitation from Congresswoman Lucy McBath, and we're here at the result party, waiting for the results to come in, and so I'm excited about what God is doing in the life of His people, certainly excited about what God is doing for the Congresswoman, we pray that we will leave with positive results and we just thank God as we get ready to go in and celebrate and so I invite you to come celebrate with us as we go into the result room. Because just hours ago, we paid for the weapons of war on our streets again, mm -hmm. with the blood of little children sitting in our schools. We paid for unfettered gun access with phone calls to mothers and fathers who have gasped for air when their desperation would not let them breathe, who have sunk to their knees when their agony just would not let them stand. It was a phone call that every parent fears. It's a, a singular fear, an all-consuming fear, a love so deep for our children that we wake up in a cold sweat, wondering, is my child okay? How is how is she? Where are they? 
We all have it. We all feel that way sometimes. God gave me all the radiance that came with raising my son, Jordan. Sitting on the floor with Jordan, watching him play and watching him giggle. Of watching him go out the door on his first day of school with a backpack as big as he was. <laughs> of watching him grow and think about the world in ways that only Jordan could. And 40 years after my parents, pushed me in the stroller at the March on Washington. Forty years after they had fought against the race, racism that made them separate, but entirely unequal. Forty years after they courageously fought to fully realize our nation as the land of the free and the home of the brave, my son was murdered simply because of the color of his skin. And across the country, from Uvalde to Sandy Hook, from Charleston to Buffalo, the violence that took my son is being replayed with casual callousness and despicable frequency. And the children who survived these shootings will now live the rest of their lives with the trauma that only stepping over a friend covered in blood could ever bring. We are better than this. We have to be better than this. We cannot be the only nation where our children are torn apart on Tuesday and their deaths are gone from the news cycle by Wednesday. We cannot be the only nation where one party sits on their hands as children are forced to cover their faces in fear. We are exhausted, all of us, the American majority. We are exhausted because we cannot continue to be the only country in the world where we let this happen again and again and again. And that is why on the steps of the courthouse after Jordan's trial, I made a promise to my son. I made a promise to my community to my family, that I would live the rest of my life every day, and I would act. I promised that I would take all of that devotion a mother has for her child, all the love that poured out of my soul and into my tears, that I would do everything in my power to keep Jordan's community safe. And that's why we're here tonight. We are here because this isn't just a policy agenda. This isn't just numbers and a budget or text on a page. This is about the challenges that we've faced, the obstacles we've overcome the experiences that have shaped us and the lives that we've lived that simply have made us who we are. This is about real people with real challenges. And the work we do in Washington is not hypothetical. It's the daughter off at college who just received the call that will change her life who just learned that her mother has breast cancer, who drives through the night to be with the woman who raised her, frightened that her mom may not be there to watch her raise a family of her own. It's the brother who lost his sister at Sandy Hook, at Ubaldi. It's the father who lost his daughter at Parkland. It's the 
mother who lost her son at a gas station with his friends simply for playing his music too loud. These are our journeys. Walks on paths that God has laid out for us. God raised me in the heart of the civil rights movement with parents who fought so hard that one day we would all be regarded by the fullness of our hearts, not the color of our skin. And I thank every one of you that are in this room tonight because you sent this mom on a mission to Congress. And all of us together can continue to do this work. The work we need to do in Washington, the work we need to do right here in Georgia, and right here in our communities to keep our families together and the dreams and aspirations of our nation to keep them alive. Because this night isn't the end of an election, but the beginning of the change that each and every one of us must be. Tonight, we are not the end of a challenge, but we are actually on the face of a mountain. One arm ahead to pull ourselves up, the other stretch back to embrace those who feel forgotten or left behind. America has always been defined by the challenges that we face. And we face a brave one tonight. But we can be a nation where the many, the many who may not look like us, think like us, or worship or act like us are simply one nation. So tonight, I stand in front of you as Lucy Macbeth, a daughter of the civil rights movement, a woman who survived breast cancer twice, and a mother who lost her son to gun violence. I am reminded that the true strength of this nation does not lie in the measure of our riches or the magnitude of our wealth, but in the strength of our character, in the bonds of our brotherhood, and in the sheer future that we must create together. Thank you. For Congresswoman Lucy McBath, a lot of lives, Kristen Crowley following that race for us this evening. Uh, what's the reaction there now that the AP has called this race? Yeah, a lot of excitement here, although they have not announced it in this hall that the AP has called the race. It was just a few minutes ago, maybe 10 or 15 minutes ago, uh, one of the campaign managers came on stage and said that they had heard some confirmation from a few places, but they wanted more confirmation that she had actually be the projected winner. 
and they haven't been back since. So I'm not sure this room is very aware at this moment right now. I can't imagine, though, once they are, that this is going to erupt in a bunch of applause. They were watching some Lucy McBath videos on the television a little bit earlier and applauding every time she spoke. We had a few questions going into tonight. You know, was was McBath going to win? And if, if she did okay, was she going to go into a runoff? Well, it looks like both of those questions are answered right now. It seems that she is.